All right, so this um, – the, the game we'll be watching, the end-of-game situation we'll be watching is Milwaukee's very own Arike Agumbawale played at Notre Dame. 2018 had a crazy Final Four, hit two game winners in uh, back-to-back Final Four games, uh, in the semifinals against UConn, and then in the finals, the national championship game against Mississippi State. So uh, this game is against UConn. Um, She's in uh, – they're, they're in overtime, 38.1 seconds left. Uh, Aguma Wale is at the free throw line. If there is a miss by Mississippi State, you must secure the – So I just want to go – so Notre Dame was down big in this game, and uh, they made a, a comeback, and Aguma Wale was a huge part of that, gum, that comeback. She was just making, like, crazy shots. So – you know, at this time when I'm watching the game, I'm like, man, they cannot allow her to get the ball back in her hands. Like, right here, I'm saying it. Don't let her get the ball back. And, man. That's crazy. And here's the thing. Like, UConn, you know, they didn't have any timeouts left. Because in the women's game, you can – advance but they almost they got a, a, a decent with one second left having a little length of the court no time to set anything up i mean they got a decent look i don't know if she got it off in time but they got a probably about as decent look as they can get so this game was against uh mississippi state the national championship game uh it was uh not the next day but the day after um and fourth quarter tie game 40 seconds left to go mississippi tierra mccowan first of all watching this in real time i thought this might have been a foul they didn't call it but tierra mccowan she does a great job by fouling here you know she's actually gonna foul out of the game but she had to foul um because there look there's two notre dame players that work that didn't get back so Jackie Young can throw this ball ahead, and, and they get the go-ahead score. Uh, notice up here at the top, Vic Schaefer, you see uh, the gentleman here in the, in, the, in the tie, in the white shirt. He's trying to call timeout. So he is livid because he feels like he should have got the timeout call, um, and, and he doesn't get it. Crazy shot. Now, here's something I want you to look at. Um, so what Notre Dame does, they're going to, Jessica Shepard's going to come over here like she's setting a, a baseline ball screen, I mean a baseline screen, cross screen. 33 and a Goomba Wale, they're going to be involved in some action, but it's really kind of just like a, like a distraction, right? Really like a decoy because Shepard is going to flip back around. They want to isolate Shepard down here. Three seconds left, they want to isolate her to get a score, get uh, get a foul call. Um, Mississippi State does this great thing. If you notice, the the person that's on the ball, that's Blair Schaefer, that's uh, Vic Schaefer, Mississippi State's coach's daughter. That's not really pertinent information. But anyway, she's on the ball, and um, but she's kind of looking at the sideline. And they, Mississippi State does a great job, because watch, watch this. As, as Shepard goes to make her move, right, 23, she goes to make a move. Schaefer from Mississippi State, she drops off the ball and drops down the cover so they can't make this pass. So great job of the play being scouted. And so coaches, you know, we think we're so smart when we draw perfect plays and all this, that, and the other. But then you got to have players that, got in, that have instincts, players that can make things happen, players that can, you know, uh, get open and make something happen. And then you see a Guba Wale here, number 24, uh, she's guarded by Vivians, and she, they're both pros. But she's going she's gonna to find a way to get open, and then she just makes a, an improbable shot. Man, crazy shot. Um, you know, she had a, a, a incredible Final Four. I think Kobe reached out via Twitter. She ended up meeting Kobe. Uh, she's a pro now. Had a great year this past year with the, the with the Dallas Wings. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, I hope hope that was exciting for you, and uh, it's the kind of intro into our man set plays lecture. 
So today's uh, lecture will be Man Set Plays. Um, and really just kind of talk through some offensive systems, um, which, you know, this is going to be different than what we talked about earlier with our motion offense, um, with our continuity offenses, um, even your flex, which is, again, is a continuity offense. Um, it's going to be uh, different in, in how you go about uh, implementing the, these things, but man set, and play, man set plays are definitely something uh, that's needed in when you're talking about your offensive philosophy, your offensive system. All right, so purpose of set plays, they're designed for a specific option, right? You want, you're looking for a three. Um, you're looking to get a mid-range shot or to try to get a layup, or you want a particular player to get the ball in a particular area. Um, you know, so that's the purpose of a set play. Um, you know, you want to, again, get a particular player the ball and, and also get that player the ball in a particular area. Um, the type of shot that you're looking for. You know, we talk about situational basketball, end of game. Coaches are going to have, like, some down, down three stuff, um, some down two stuff um, where, you know, they need to get a three off or they need to get a play where they're going to the basket. Um, you know, so a, a lot of different situations. Um, you want to create a mismatch. So maybe you set a screen and uh, where you forcing them to have to switch on the screen and now you have a, a guard uh, guarding a post player, right? Or you set something up where you get a post player guarding a guard out on the perimeter or something like that. Um, sometimes you need it to just settle down your offense. You've been running your continuity or your motion. You haven't been getting a lot out of it. Um, or, you know, you just haven't been disciplined in what you need to do. You've gone a, a few possessions without scoring or, or just a few possessions um, without a few possessions without scoring or a few possessions without getting a good shot. Um, and so you just need to settle your offense down, really kind of work the ball around um, and, and kind of give some order, make everybody like, hey, you have to do this, you have to do this, as opposed to like, them having to read it, um, you know, you take away the, their reading options and, and now it's just, okay, here, we're looking for this particular play and, and just kind of get everybody settled down and, and on the same page. Great for after timeouts, you know, they're called uh, ATOs. You have coaches that are known, you know, Doc uh, Rivers uh, recently let go by the, by the Clippers, new head coach of the 76ers. He's a, he's known as a great ATO coach. Uh, Brad Stevens is known as a great ATO, co ATO coach. Um, I'll tell you, my head coach here, uh, Kyle Recklitz, um, she's really known. She's a really good ATO coach. Um, we have this system called Synergy that kind of ranks all the schools, um, Division One schools, and, and, and all the women's basketball schools uh, together. And uh, we were ranked pretty high um, as far as scoring coming out of a timeout, you know, where, where coaches draw up a set or something like that. Um, so it was good for, for out of timeouts. And I'll tell you, after every timeout, we come out and we run something. A lot of times it's something that's not necessarily in our, in our play bank, uh, something that coach just draws up. Um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's good for that. And, again, coming out of a timeout, you know, hopefully everyone is, you know, settled, they're focused. Um, and you, you coming out of it to really kind of try to attack the defense in a particular way. Um, it can serve as a different entry into your main offense. And so, um, like the European ball screen, of course, you know, I love it. I've talked about it um, a lot, but you can run a set play. And, you know, or even when we talked about flex, we talked about getting into a flex a different way, but you can run a whole set, right, where you go through four, five, six options, and then it transitions into your main offense. Um, and I love that because, you know, if someone's supposed to be, uh, let's say, hedging a ball screen or, or, um, or w whatever they're supposed to be doing from a defensive standpoint, if they've had to run through a set or a different um, – a, a, a different like screens or this that and the other and now they're supposed to hedge on the ball screen but if they're late they're not going to be able to hedge and they might be late because they just had to help off of uh, you know, help off of some another screen that was being set and now you're going into your main offense so it gives a different look for your main offense 
Um, and now there's an option where you might not have been getting out of your main offense. Now you can get it because the defense had to move around a little bit um, as opposed to kind of being said and already scouted out your main offense. Well, now, you know, they didn't scout all these other actions on top of the main or going into the main offense. And so, um, so I love set plays for that reason too. And again, uh, and you can deceive the defense from just the similarity, right? And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you set the play up one for a high, one for a low, horns, whatever it is, and you run it, and it looks like it's the same play, but then you just make this small adjustment, and now it's a different play, and it throws the defense off. Um, so so I, I love that about it, too, where, you know, you can come down and you can run a play, or maybe you only get to the second option in that set. And so you come and you run it. And again, one of my favorite <laughs> memories is coaching a couple of years ago, and uh, – you know, I called out a play. We scored off of it, but we only got to, like, the second option. And so I called the play, and the coach is yelling, it's the same play, it's the same play. And uh, they take away option two, but that just opened up option three, and we scored again, you know. And uh, I felt good about myself <laughs> when that happens. But um, so, yeah, you can deceive the defense uh, just with the similarity, and they think it's something, and you make that small change, and it's, it's really something else. All right, some of some limitations. All right, so you do have limited options, right? Um, you know, as we talked about with the motion offense, we talked about with the, the Euro ball screen. Um, more than likely, like you can come down and run it a bunch of times, and um, you might get had a, the same options, but you can hit those options various, just, just a lot of different ways. Um, whereas when we're talking about set plays, you you have a limited amount of options and you're going to run through those options um, pretty quickly. And you're not going to have really too much outside of that. So you just limit your options when, and, and when I, when I was, when I first started coaching, you know, a lot of my coaching was sets. Um, and, and then I told you, I kind of had like this aha moment of uh, kind of changing things up. But yeah, a lot of a lot of my motion, a lot of my main offense was sets and I've kind of switched up since then. Um, but you just run into limited options. And like if you're at the high school level or the nine shot clock level, um, you gotta, you know, come back out and run another set and come back out and run another set. So yeah, uh, yeah, should not be your main offense. Um, and for, for just that, that reason you know, um, that you just run out, you just have limited options. And so I think uh, even at the high school level, uh, even in the middle school level, they should have some type of continuity of motion type of offense um, and, and not just a bunch of sets where you got to come back out and call another set, um, things like that. Can be scouted. So it, it can be scouted there. We have certain plays uh, that we're kind of like, man, I don't know what they're going to do with this. I don't know how, however they guard this a mistake. And I guess that's the mindset you have to have as a, as an offensive player and even an offensive minded coach. Um, but yeah, your sets can be scouted, you know, and that's one thing, you know, is that it's hard for your, your continuity and your emotions. Like they can, they can be scouted, but again, because of they they operate a lot of reading um, and your sets do too, but it's just, it's just less room for um, for reading because you're trying to get a specific type of shot. Um, so yeah, it can be scouted, and you know players can really work on take teams can really work on taking things away. Um, there was a particular team in our conference last year with a couple of our sets. They really like in our horn series. Anytime we got the ball to the high post, whoever was guarding, they like really took a step back, and they were really wide and big. Um, and so we had to kind of. The second time we played them, we had to change it up because they just took that away from us. Um, and, but they had scouted those sets. And, and so, you know, when we switched it up, we were able to get things off that we weren't able to get off the first time. Um, yeah, doesn't always develop basketball instincts, again, because you, there's a particular, uh, a, t a particular shot you're looking for. There's a particular player that you're looking to get the ball. Um, and so really you kind of, sometimes you just kind of, you force it, you make it happen and you don't, um, necessarily always read the defense. You just like, look, the ball needs to get here. I don't, you know, sometimes coaches will say, look, I don't care. I don't know how it, I don't care how it gets there. It needs to get there. I don't want you to go off script. I don't want you to do your own thing. I don't want you to read it. I want you to get the ball where I need to get to. So 
that, that can kind of take away from developing basketball instincts when running sets is just like your main thing. Um, and then, yeah, the details can be hard to remember. You know, like you might know the motion, but it's the timing of it, right? It's the, you know, because you, you'll have multiple sets. And with this set, you need to come right, you know, you need to go over the top right away. But in this other set, you need to hold and wait a little bit. And, um, you know, you need to go, you need to set up the cut this way. But here you need to not necessarily worry about setting up the cut. You need to come off quickly. So it's just those small details uh, that can be hard to remember. Um, and as a coach, you can kind of get, you know, a little frustrated with that, where you have players that just have trouble remembering those little, those small little details. All right, so we're going to look at a, a few of them. This is, um, I call this Louis series. Um, we, we, we call it something else now. Um, but I got this a few years ago, just watching Louisville play. So that's why I got it called the Louis series. And just a, a series of uh, one four high sets that they ran. Um, so, and I think I've probably discussed this before, and and maybe I need to give you all a legend. But you know, the dotted line is a pass, the solid line is a cut, and so uh, the two would go underneath while the three goes over the top. This three over the top, this is called an Iverson cut, which I think it, we 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 talked about the Iverson cut. I believe in your. Uh, your basketball terminology quiz in the packet that I gave you. Um, so yeah, the one, the two will go underneath, the three will go over the top. One makes the pass to the three. Uh, the four would do what we call a slip. So they will come like they're coming to set the screen for the three and they will cut. This, this bar at the end represents a actual screen. So five will follow right behind set a screen. The three can either make the pass to the slip. If not, they come off the screen looking for the shot or maybe a pass over here to one or a pass over to two. So that would be like, you know, Louis one or, or whatever. Um, and then the, let me, let me go back. This is how you can flow right back into the continuity. So you see three here with the ball, um, three, let's say in this scenario, three made the pass to two, four will come out and uh, one will cut through then four will set the ball screen five will come up and you're right back into the european continuity offense um so that's where that's a way where your set can run into your offense and make the defense work a little bit before they have to come off those uh deal with the ball screens and all of that um this oh this one was a second way to get into it if the ball went to the to the one first uh, the two will cut through, the one will drill below the free throw line to get the, the best angle for the screen, um, and then you will go into it. All right, now, Louis, continue with the Louis series. All right, it's looking, everything is kind of looking the same. Two go underneath, the three go over top. Um, Now another option out of it. So the top one was the last option we ran. Another option out of it would be now the four goes and set uh, this cross screen for the five and the five would dive. Um, and again, so it, it looks the same, but now the four and the five are doing something different, right? Um, and then uh, another option would be instead of the, the four will go and set the screen, but instead of the five diving down to five, the five will come set the ball screen and the four would slip. So they will set the screen for the five and they will slip down. Um, so again, just a, a, another option, different option um, for, for you to go into uh, with this series. So then we have the horn series. Horns, this setup um, is you're gonna have your four and your five at the slots. Uh, Sometimes it's at the elbow area. Um, a lot of times with us, we play at the three-point line area just to, just to spread out the floor a little bit. And then your other two guards are going to be down uh, in the corners, right? So that's your horns. It's also called an A set as well. Um, and so in this particular uh, play, one comes off the screen for the five, the three clears out, right? So they will clear out, the two will slide up, and now the one and the five have all this room on the side of the um, on the side of the the floor, right side of the floor to to score and to operate. And so one would come off the screen for five. Of course, they would have a shot option, um, and then they will also you know be able to hit the roll. And then uh, if they don't have the roll, 
they can make the pass to the four. And, and now you see us getting right back into the offense, right back into the continu continuity ball screen um, where the four would slide over. Of course, they would have a shot. If not, they take the dribble. The two would cut back door. The three would come up. And then the four would go and set the screen. Um, four would go and set the screen for three. And then you're right back into your offense. All right, so again, this is how the play on the left here, you'll see this is the, the first play uh, in, this, in this series. All right, now on the second play in the series that you can run, the one is coming off, but now five doesn't come up to set the ball screen. Two cuts through, just like, it's, like three did last time, two cuts through. Um, but then when they get to the middle, instead of them going all the way through, they run off of what we call an elevator screen here. So they're coming up and then, Five and four, they will set, um, they will close the door, right? They will come together after two gets through the screen. They will shut the door like an elevator. That's why we call it elevator screen. And now we get the three-point shot for the two here. Um, another option is this three. This is one of my, my, favorite, my favorite plays right here. Um, the three will come through. And uh, again, setting up, you see here on the left, Three comes through, cutting all the way through. This uh, other time, they stopped halfway and we were in the elevator. Now over here on the far right, they come through and set what we call a slice screen. So they would set a screen for the four. The four would dive down to this uh, block area. Looking, That's the first option. And then um, the second option would be five. After they set this ball screen for the one, they would turn around and set the down screen for three. So three sets the slice screen for four. And then they come off a down screen from five. And then one is either looking to, you know, score, hit four on the cross screen, or we have, uh, or we have uh, three coming down off this down screen where one make the pass back to the three for the shot. Um, so, yeah, just, just so much, so much um, that, that can happen there in, 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 this, uh, in this offense. And, again, it looks the same. It's setting up like it's going to be the same thing. Um, but you can run run something different off of it every time. And that just helps like, uh, like you can scout it, but man, they got to scout everything. And maybe you, you know, in our conference, like we were just talking yesterday where we have some things that we can run. Um, and it's like, you know, maybe we'll save a couple of them for the second time we play them. Um, so the first time we'll, we'll run it. And then the second time we'll run something that looks like it, but it's a little bit different. Um, so that they always have to kind of stay on their toes as it concerns trying to scout uh, what we're doing. Um, so yeah, that's it uh, with our main uh, man set plays. Um, I believe our next our next um, lecture will be uh, just a zone offense, just doing some stuff with some zone offense, and um, I will show you a few videos uh, coming up about. Um, some of those systems that we run and how we run it one way one time and then we run it another way another time. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, assignment is coming soon and I think I'll, I'll probably go ahead and post this assignment um, where it'll, it'll be a discussion assignment and you will have to come up with your offensive system and kind of explain it. Explain it and I'll give all the details but you have to defend or you as a coach, you put your coat hat on, what you want to run, you know, after, out of the things that we talked about. And even you can come up with an offense that um, we haven't talked about yet, but what you want to run um, and like how, how uh, what, what, what it is, what it's going to look like, who your personnel will be um, and all those things. And I'll kind of lay all that out in the assignment page. But really what I care about is if you think about it, people have won national championships you know, in college, people have won championships in the NBA, Euro League, WNBA, you know, different ways, running different offenses, running different different defenses. Um, and so I want you to kind of put your coaching hat on. I appreciated the, the critiques that I got with, you know, your ball screen is my offense. I really love it. But I, I appreciate some of the critiques, critiques and why people say, yeah, I wouldn't want to do this type of offense. Um, so I, I get that. I like that. Um, because at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable with what you want to do as a coach. And that's kind of the mindset I want you to have for this class. So 
Um, that assignment will be coming up where you'll have to defend your offensive philosophy, your offensive system, and talk about the type of personnel that you want to have. You know, the college level, we recruit for it. Uh, NBA, they make trades and, and they draft and all those things to kind of get the personnel they need for their particular system. Um, so, yeah. Um, next, though, will be the videos on our man set plays. Hope you enjoy. Hope you can see how they all uh, set up. So this is um, a couple of um, man set plays. This is from uh, one of my teams a few years ago. Um, and we're setting up in a horn set. So our post play is trailing in. We have another post here. We have, we have a guard in this far uh, right corner and then this guard in this top left corner. So she's going to come off the ball screen. We're going to set that slice screen, which I think this is one of the plays that, that was in the presentation. Uh, post is going to roll off of it. So we get it, set it. Boom, easy, right? Easy play. Great job of, uh, of setting the screen down here. She flashes hard off of it. Great pass right on the money. And we get a bucket. So we didn't get into the second part of the play. So we come down, we run it again. This time run it the same direction, um, different person that's over there. Come set the screen. The coach is yelling out. Uh, this is the one I was talking about. The coach is yelling out same play. So she's, she's getting set ready. The defense is getting set, kind of cheating the play, um, which you know I, I would have loved for us to switch the screen on that. Clear, come on the backside. But anyway, she just cuts down. And this guard is waiting, defensive guard is waiting, and now we come down off the down screen and we get an open three out of it. So again, same exact play. Now we just get to the next option of, of the set. Here you'll see uh, with us last year, so this is um, our one for high set. Um, now what you'll see here is two different plays. We've actually met, uh, merged this into one play right now. Uh, but anyway, so one four high. We start with a handoff here. All right, and this is like my the Louis series. We just switch it up a little bit. Um, but the point guard hands it off. They go underneath. This three guard goes over the top. Now we drop it off at the uh, high post. And that three curls it. Let's look at it again. Watch number one. Boom, she curls it. And we get a nice little, and, be, and because uh, we're bringing this point guard over here and the ball's up top, this person is not able to stay in and help. Um, and then when this pass goes here, she has to jump. This Look at number four in black. She has to jump um, to her person, to number three. She has to jump over here because she has a respect. She's only one pass away. And that's what allows um, this pass to go here. Easy play. Now, notice, and let's go back just a little bit. Notice the, the person that's guarding number one, number 21, she goes over the top, okay? And so we called this one thing, and then we had another play for when they would go underneath. All right, so there's the end one. So now this play right here um, is when the defender goes underneath. Same setup. Defender goes underneath. Now, instead of curling, she pops out, and we get the three. Now, last year, we called that two different things. This year, it's the same play, and we just read, we just read the defense. Um, and we got a bunch of these plays. We got, like, right now, we've only installed, like, four, four of these, but we got these plays. It's our wheel series where one person goes over the top, one goes underneath. Um, and look at number 14 in green. She goes underneath this. We read it, boom, pop out. Easy three, easy three. All right, now some men's basketball. We'll check out um, Appalachian State men's team. They're running uh, a horn set. I like this, but uh, this, is a little, this is a little different. He comes off, they set down screens first. And then they go into uh, into some horns action. And now he comes off the ball screen. 
They start with the down screens, then they pop out, and now they're in horns. Ball screen, easy, easy play. Horns action that was similar to the first Appalachian State play that we watched. Again, start with the down screens. Get into horns. He pops out. This number 20 is going to pop to the corner. But now the person that made the pass out top, they run, you run this little brush screen right here and get them open, right? So everything kind of looks the same. You know, he could have come. He definitely, the, my, um, the post player right here, definitely could have come out to set a ball screen. But instead, they make an entry to the slot area of the court. Now he runs them off a brush and nice basket. So I hope you were just able to see there how things can be set up the same way um, and then just run differently each time. It could be something different. The defense, they can scout it. They try to get used to it. And then you just make one slight adjustment to, to take advantage of the defense. Um, so, yeah, these were some man set plays. And I, I hope uh, if you don't understand any of it or you if it doesn't make enough sense, uh, reach out to me and I'll make sure I can uh, I'll break it down even more for you.